So we will talk about how AM has to adapt. But let's start with the opening tip. We're ready to go. Loud crowd, big crowd turning out on a Sunday afternoon, and the opening tip fought for and controlled by Chloe Kitts, and we're underway here at Reed Arena. I asked Joni Taylor about pay. She goes, we're going to start off doing what we do. You see the player-to-player defense. They want to try to get out and score quickly, but it starts with the defense. Kits a wide-open look, knocks it down for the game's first two, averaging 10 points a game. We mentioned Bowles in the starting five. And Dia Rogers at the point. Aisha Koulibaly will play the four today. She is their leading scorer. Sahara Jones coming off a really good game against Tennessee. And now a steal for Raven Johnson back the other way. And a good start for South Carolina. Well, we've talked about Texas A&M's defense, but uh, let's not forget South Carolina's defense, one of the tops in the country. They can turn you over, and they can make you pay quickly by getting it up the floor and scoring. Here's Jones. Rodgers back out to Bowles. Bowles a good shooter. She's been struggling to find her shot this season. Here's Ware. Where on the drive, Cardoso there defensively, and Kitts cleans it up. Starting five, very familiar for the Gamecocks. Seeing a pow pow, the top three point shooter in the country. Cardoso averaging a double double at 13 and 10. Bree Hall has doubled her scoring output from a year ago, and Johnson runs the points. Picked up by Koulibaly. Here comes Rodgers as AM wants to push. And this is where I think. A&M has to be able to steal some points here today in transition before the Gamecocks get set in their half-court D. Koulibaly leans in, can't get it to go, and the rebound for Kitts. Eric, two of the top five rebounding teams in the country. So far, A&M not even getting near an offensive rebound. Pow Pow drives and leans in for two more. 6 nothing run for South Carolina. They last played on Monday and now showing no signs of rush, rust here in the opening minutes on the road. Aggies still looking for their first points. Bree Hall with the rebound. Cardoso defended by Ware. Ware, very good defensive player, stood her ground, but a foul is going to be called on Lauren Ware. There you see Dawn Staley, 16th season now. As South Carolina's head coach, 16 and overall, 4 and 0 in the SEC. So it's a 16 game winning streak. They've won 26 in a row on the road, and they've won 35 in a row in SEC regular season play. So what I I've hear got, you I've say, got, you, you want streaks? I got streaks. I got plenty. There's more where that came from. You're saying they're pretty good. <laughs> no. One thing already for Texas A&M: the two players who cannot afford to get in foul trouble today, Lauren Ware. And a Koulibaly. Koulibaly just picking up that first foul. Jones. And that's going to be a walk. Looking a little ragged here against the number one team in the country in the opening three minutes. Well, you can't underestimate the effect of Janiah Barker not being on the floor. She takes up so much attention from opposing teams. So now defense is going to play a lot more solid against this AM lineup. And it's also on the glass where Barker's a huge loss for him. Oh, tough three, but she makes everything from outside the line. 57%. Koulibaly on the drive. Cardoso comes to help. Picked up by Jones. Still a lid on the basket for Texas A&M. Bree Hall on the push. Nice job by Rodgers there in transition defense because Cardoza is first post down. And there is a foul on Ware. Count the basket and a chance for a three-point play. Well, and one thing that Don Staley said today is, I want my bigs to get more aggressive and look to score one-on-one down the low post. Head coach Don Staley has to be loving this and one opportunity. Cardoso, 69% for the free throw line. Can't hit this time, but a second chance opportunity. Kitts, and a offensive foul is going to be called on Chloe Kitts. Soleil Williams, freshman from Cincinnati, into the game. There's Rodgers. Can't hit. Cardoso's got the rebound. Well, Cardoso had Kitts on the run out, missed her. Pow, pow on the push. Back for Hall. Johnson runs the point. Kits back to Johnson. Johnson, little off balance, knocks it in for two more. 
15-0 run to start the game for number one South Carolina. It's equal opportunity. They're selfless. They're sharing the ball, and they're trying to create the high percentage look. Hilton on the drive and the kick, and the freshman. And AM staying in the player-to-player defense. Something to watch is the battle down low between Cardoso and Ware. Right now, Cardoso's... Williams has the points for AM so far. First 15 points of the game were scored by South Carolina. Good job by Koulibaly to get on the glass, but she has been able over these last several years to keep everybody happy when she's got 10 or 11 players who should be on the court. Well, remember last year going into the last weekend of SEC play, her bench was out scoring, I think, all but two teams in the SEC or even more. And I'm looking at her. You have the number one three-point shooter in the country. Hilton's been really good so far for the Aggies, creating second chance opportunities and just being active. Rogers a couple of steps beyond the three point line, couldn't hit, and a foul is going to be called on Texas A&M. That's going to put the Aggies over the limit. Just didn't have post step, so the decision is now. Fagan knocks down a couple of free throws. Hilton spinning against Pow Pow. To Koulibaly, and she'll earn a trip. Your top three scores for AM: Koulibaly coming into the game, 211 points. A team that struggled to score last year, now scoring 74 points a game this year. Three transfers that you see on the screen right now are averaging 62% of the points, 40 points a game in SEC play. So they are playing their best now when their team needs them most. Johnson, good. Koulibaly spinning, swatted by Watkins. 47th block of the season for Ashlyn Watkins. Down to the basket goes Pow Pow. No, the follow-up, yes, Fagan. I take nothing away from South Carolina's defense. It is good. It is disruptive. It is rim protective. But how much of an impact is Barker's loss right now? Because the ball's not moving quite as well. Because South Carolina knows which who to help off on. That helps coaches who just influence you because you just want to emulate who they are on and off the floor. And that was Pat's summit for so many of us. Uh, we lost for way too soon. The basketball world will never be impacted the way she was able to impact it again. Well, her impact traveling violation call. We talked to Dawn Staley about that today because her mom Estelle passed away, believe it or not, now it's seven years ago in 2017 and we know Treating for those in memory loss, Alzheimer's, dementia, it is so hard just to watch the loved ones change before your very eyes. It is it is a challenge, and what the Pat Summit Foundation is trying to do, including coming up in June, Pat's game plan. Hey, one of Pat's favorite quotes, and, and it really, it, you can tell Dom, her team is her second family. Sarah Jones leading the way for Texas A&M. She's got five points. Wear back in the game, Eric. Something to watch here with those two fouls. And she's trying to work against Camilla Cardoso. And four points now for Watkins off the bench. Six, Williams. I was going to say 16 paint points for South Carolina already. And that's the loss of wear for the better part of that quarter. But it's also right now South Carolina's ability to beat their defender one-on-one. Player down for South Carolina is Johnson. Slow to get up. Cardoso swings it to Hall. And Cardoso fighting against Ware, and Cardoso gets called. Also, just want to follow up, keeping an eye out for Tessa Johnson. She limped over to the bench. Don't see her over the bench right now. We'll keep an eye out. For Texas A&M, they're 3 of 11 from 3. They are 0 of 12 inside the arc. They've actually made one. Tennessee 44-24. Trying to push back into South Carolina, but ice cold from the field so far. And then a breakdown defensively. Bree Hall takes... Started slow offensively, but has been so good from three, especially here in SEC play. In this generation where players transfer when they're not playing, nice to see Bree Hall get her flowers here this season. Nice job by Rogers to find Ware, who had the advantage against Johnson, but just couldn't hit. Texas A&M, 15% shooting from the floor. 
Hall, open look for three. Wow, there's so many similarities with the South Carolina team. That last possession is where I see the growth the most, is how they're reading the defense, making the extra pass to get that high percentage look. Where? And obviously LSU came out, as you mentioned, played really well against Tennessee. How much have they improved was going to be what they were going to discover here this afternoon against the number one team. Rodgers, count it, and one. Uses her body to shield the defender trying to come from behind with the block. Hall. Inside, there's Rodgers getting a hand on it. Still controlled by South Carolina. No reset of the shot clock. Three-pointer is knocked down by Full Wiley. And a fight in the paints. A foul's going to be called on South Carolina. I think they're going to count the basket, though. Wally definitely has it out of her hands in the air. And, and yeah, second. Watkins pushed off. That was what the call was. So it's not, it's a Watkins foul, but Watkins was frustrated. I, I don't blame her because it looked like Bowles fell more than she was pushed. Watkins stood her ground on that attack, but then there's Sahara Jones to clean it up. Again, another good performance by Jones. Seven first half points for Jones. Averaging under seven a game. Full Wiley on the spin for two. Uh, in case you haven't been watching South Carolina this season, when Full <laughs> Wiley steps missed a, on the you've floor, you've missed a lot. <laughs> you don't step away. You don't go to the bathroom. You don't look down at your phone. Your eyes must stay on this young lady because she is so dynamic and fun to watch. Rogers took a bump and we'll head back to the free throw line to shoot a couple. And here you go. Malaysia, full Wally, able to hang in the air. I mean, the handles, the footwork, the body control, and the touch. The foul on Watkins, her third personal foul, so she heads to the bench with three here in the first half. Raven Johnson trying to keep her head in the game. I see Tessa Johnson back on the bench, by the way. That's a good sign for South Carolina. And a foul is going to be called on Rodgers. That's her first. She'll head to the sideline to defend the inbounder, and that is her former teammate at the University of Oregon. Tina Pow Pow, those two matched up one on one right now. Well, they were two of the more dynamic scoring guards in the Pac 12 <laughs> last pow, year. Pow Pow wanted it. Uh, pow Pow wanted it, you could just tell, and she got it. This is the best I've seen both of them play. Pow Pow using the curl because she knows Rodgers is chasing, cuts the angle. We know her as a three point shooter, but yeah, she can get downhill and score as well. Her contributions for this team. Here's Ware, remember, playing with the two fouls. Nowhere to go against Cardoso. Take it away into the hands of Hall. Full Wiley a deep three. How about it? Top three-point shooting team in Division One when it comes to percentage at better than 43% from the field. Green. Jones. You can see the improvement has turned into a great strength for them this year. And I think it starts with Pow Pow. And I asked her today, because we know all the whys as she came to South Carolina. She wanted to be better defensively. She wanted to be challenged. She wanted to get pro ready. But I said, what have you brought to this team? And she said, I think I give them confidence. I think they know when they shoot the three that's going to go in. And I thought that was so enlightening for one of the best shooters in the country. Fagan, ahead of the field, was calling for it. Hall got it to her. Closing in on 90 seconds to go. Fagan with a little hook. She's had a good first half. So we've seen Cardozo post up and score. We've seen Fagan post up and score. We've seen Watkins score in the paint. This is what I mean. There's just so many different ways that South Carolina comes at you with different players in terms of their athleticism and skill. They have 47 points on the board, Christy. No one's in double figures yet. They've got four with eight points. 
That balance has been a big part of their success this year. 16-0, and 4-0 in the SEC. Texas A&M, 23 points. South Carolina, 24 paint points. Fagan is fouled. Triple header here on the SEC Network, including number one South Carolina taking on Vanderbilt in Columbia. That's at three Eastern, two Central here on the SEC Network, also on the ESPN app. They will start with Texas A&M and Florida at one Eastern time. And this is where South Carolina, I mean, I'm sorry, the Aggies get a little bit too fast, trying to inbound the ball, step over the line. Official right there to make the call, South Carolina ball. South Carolina actually has more turnovers here in the first half than Texas A&M. But the scoreboard tells the whole story right now in this one. 15-0 run to start the game for South Carolina. Right now on top by 26. Pow Pow defended by Williams. Fagan. Kulabali's got to be careful with the two. Here comes Full Wiley to the basket. Fagan with 10, Full Wiley with 10. Shot clock off, final seconds, first half. And that was thrown out of bounds. And it'll be South Carolina with the final possession. Malaysia Full Wiley, so explosive. And knows she's got the step on her defender and just blows fire to get to the rim. South Carolina averaging 90 points a game, second to LSU in the SEC, fourth in Division I. They've put 51 on the board against a very good Texas A&M team. Looking to add to it right here. Full Wiley, deep three. Yes, right in front of the A&M bench for the exclamation point on the first half. One of the most dynamic freshmen in our game with 13 first half points. So she will watch from the bench to begin here in the third quarter. Take a look at some of the numbers here. South Carolina, and the home team is Texas A&M, by the way. 54-23 our score as we're underway here in the third quarter. Johnson, Cardoso trying to find Chloe Kitts, and Koulibaly gets called for her third personal foul. Texas A&M was giving up, on average, 51 points a game. South Carolina scored 54 in the first 20 minutes of the game. Again, Texas A&M coming in with the third best field goal percentage defense. Needs a little bit of time to respond. Not worried about that now. Now it's about execution on offense, taking what the defense gives you. But I still believe, can you get a step on your own defender to create offense for your teammates? Rodgers gets the roll. Kits from Johnson. That four player to be vocal and really set the table for her teammates. But it's Kitt's defense that's really impressed me to this point in the season. Just picked up her fourth rebound. Here's Pow Pow against Bowles. The little flip for two. Pow Pow into double figures now with ten to go along with four assists. Rogers to Jones, open three. She's having another good game. <laughs> She's sizzling. No, but that was just what I was going to say. It's nice to see her now put two games together, because especially with Barker not on the court, for, and we don't know how long she... Jones, another strong take to the basket. It's her season high 15, which came in her last game against Tennessee. Cardoso... Follows her miss. That's Koulibaly who's slow to get up. Took a well, the one thing you know is Fagan will be going in. It's just a matter of when. Rogers Got it for two. Both shots have been such a difficult degree in terms of getting the shot off and converting. Johnson. Nice little move to get free. Matched up with Rodgers. Rodgers got free. Couldn't get it. Tipped in the hands of Hall. Hall up to Cardoso. Inside for two. Soleil Williams into the game. There's Cardoso all over Jones with the block. Two for Cardoso. Cardoso. 
Williams with a nice crossover and then the beautiful fake to get open but just couldn't get the shot. Jones is down on the deck. Sadu goes down as well. Numbers the other way. Full Wiley faked the pass, dropped it down, gets the assist, the kids. With Malaysia Full Wiley on the floor. Tipped out. Here's Bree Hall. It's got Full Wiley on the left. Hall will do it herself, but not get it. But there's Kitts to clean it up on the opponent they're playing here today. We all know what's happening on Thursday. We're going to talk about it. Saw that right from the opening tip today when South Carolina scored the game's first 15 points. Well, coming off the bye, you would expect that they're locked in. Is there like it is always with this South Carolina program? Rogers knocks down the three for AM. Here's Cardoso. Kick to the corner. Fagan is into the game, and she'll turn to Don Staley and said, you know, if you put... Why? I mean, this is the number one team in the country. They're undefeated. Don Staley has always built her teams for April. She is looking for the constant improvement. She's got 16 to lead AM in scoring. Watkins couldn't get it. Koulibaly's got the rebound. Williams on the run out with full Wiley back. Williams with the finish. Freshman against freshman. Cardoso? No. And Koulibaly... Look at Cardoso going stride for stride with Koulibaly, but well done by Aisha. In most games, Joni Taylor can maneuver Aisha around to create offense for her. Playing out of position today due to Barker's absence, it's just been tough for her offensively. Inside of two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Here comes Horn's action by the Aggies trying to get Williams downhill or settling for the three. Watkins with the rebound. Full Wiley with her head up with the push. Full Wiley all the way for two and the foul. She would be, she would be <laughs> down and back before I got to the three. Down and back. <laughs> oh, nifty pass. Bowles with the finish. Hilton's played well today, just giving energy and doing some little things to help the Aggies. Wiley looks it off and finishes again. She's got 17. Remember, she had 17 in her memorable collegiate debut against Notre Dame in Paris. There's Lauren Ware. Ware can't get it. Here's Pow Pow. Now, this has been the tightest quarter so far today. South Carolina has outscored Texas A&M by two this quarter, 24-22. And now a foul is called as A&M. Six Central. Kentucky will take on South Carolina. Game two of the double. Jones over to Ware. Ware blocked by Fagan. Three seconds, two seconds. Johnson makes the pass, and the heat by Pow Pow is off the mark. And that does it it's in front of a raucous crowd. And now they'll try to go on the road and do that again against LSU on Thursday. Well, I think ever since April, this is what all of SEC Nation has been waiting for, is this rematch between these two star-studded ball clubs. And, oh, yeah, the head coaches have a look. We'll be going head-to-head -head on Thursday. I want to get into a little bit more detail on how you think that matchup's going to play out on Thursday as we go along here in the fourth quarter. India Rogers leans in for two. And then back the other way, it's Fagan who gets the layup. Jones on the drive, Watkins with the foul. Is going to attack the paint, but already 47, I'm sorry, 42 in this game. Jones playing so well these last two games. Fagan can match it here with a two. But she's going to have to wait because it's an offensive foul. How about the challenge for Ware here today? who you were singing her praises earlier, Christy, and rightly so, because she's done so much for this ex Texas A&M team, setting screens, communicating, but she has been unable to come up for air here today against these South Carolina posts. Well, think about it at different points. I actually was thinking about that this I, morning. I, As the better day that she has in her life, I really want to know what it's going to be. Knocked away. Good play again by Saharaj. Texas A&M will be at Mizzou on Thursday, then at Florida next Sunday. So you're looking for a few building blocks here against the number one team in the country.
But it's the bench reaction that you just <laughs> have to look. It just says so much about the chemistry. You no, know, today didn't go to plan for you, so our producer, Justin Argo's like, let's just. That makes her a really difficult matchup in transition because you don't know if she's looking to score or set her teammate up. On the turnaround, no. Cardoso, yes. If she's unable to go on Thursday, it would just be another example of showcasing and underscoring by those on the floor and those in the stands here at Reed Arena. Cardoso for Kitts. Kicked over to Bree Hall for three. Well, and again, it just goes to show you that it is the cumulative effect of all these players together. It's not just the starters. It's not one star. Any of these young ladies could go off for double digits, as we're seeing even here this evening. Johnson to Cardoso, leans in, count it, and the foul. For Wiley back in, Cardoso finishes the three-point play. Skima Walker comes in for South Carolina. Five and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Wire to wire lead for South Carolina. Jumped out to a 15 nothing lead. Closed the first half on a 9 nothing run to lead by 31. Now, Sakim has been 35 all year, so this isn't on her. No, that's when coaches go to the book before the game. Score, scorekeeper already put the numbers down, which he obviously went from that scorecard that was an error, but that's why you always check it. So a couple of free ones for Texas A&M, knocked in by Rogers. She's got 21 now for the Aggies. Oh, she can score. We saw it. Got 1,861 career points. Kits for Walker. Do you think that was Dawn calling a play? Look, I, I I hate that she got the technical. Let's work a play for her right away. There's a foul on the other end, and one. It's going to elevate the state of play for LSU, but you got to believe it's some because of the size advantage of South Carolina is the loss of Smith for them. Huge loss because it puts so much. Samaya Smith. Samaya. Absolutely, another walking double double for LSU and Eric. I think the point guard, the turnovers because we know how both these teams want to run. Well, there's just a culture when it comes to the state of Louisiana, and I think it's going to be on full display <laughs> on Thursday. Where couldn't get it. Is in the mix for that. I think Ole Miss is in the mix for that. Done some great things. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. You hear every coach that I talk to speak about this one word, consistency. Big win for Tennessee today, though. Big, big win. Knocking off Vanderbilt. They closed the game on an 8-0 run to improve to 5-1 and one in the SEC. Congratulations to Kelly Harper, her 100th win. Awful Wiley with the look away, dropping it down for another assist. I mean, at this point, the bench for South Carolina is just like, eh, we've seen that. <laughs> We're on the inside. Kitts comes in for the tie-up. Possession will keep it with Texas A&M. And that's the other piece for Ware. She's been double, triple team when the ball's gone down low. And you don't have to worry about a double or triple team when your point guard is able to create eight easy scoring opportunities. That was just nasty. Williams can hit. Rebound on the floor. People diving for it. Full Wiley tried to save it, but she was out of bounds. It'll be Texas A&M basketball right now. But you see, if they're healthy, flashes. Certainly one of the most improved teams in the country, let alone the SEC, but a team that can compete for a top-four spot. Well, I was always a defensive-minded coach. So for me, defense travels, and when you can limit teams, you've got a chance every night. We're seeing, though, that that margin of error is very slim right now without Barker giving him five more fouls, giving her rebound, giving her defense, giving her ability to stretch an offense. But what I have seen today is improvement in Soleil Williams, improvement in 
Aisha Kulabali even, based on her previous matchups. And I think there needs to be a little bit more balance. So much on those three transfers when it comes to point production. Who's going to be that fourth consistent score for them? She got the scoring started for Texas A&M. The problem was that the Aggies fell behind 15 nothing. Full Wiley, you're looking for positives and ways to spin things here for A&M. I thought you just brought up a good point. They're not going to quit. Where to the basket couldn't get it. Kits across half court. And that will do it. The number one team in the country is now 17 and 0. 5 and 0 in the SEC. Next up, their showdown with LSU in Baton Rouge on Thursday. Well, undermanned team. They showed up today for Texas A&M. They fought, but in the end, it's what we've been saying for the better part of four.